I tell you what, there's definitely a difference between lift capacity on a spec sheet and real world lift capacity. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and this is going to be my first day really working with the New Holland Workmaster 55. And I'm excited to learn about this machine and get some work done. Now, as you can see, I've already had it out in the mud and I've learned a few things, but we're going to do some brush cutting. We're gonna see if we can get it stuck. And then we're gonna do a lift capacity test because I wanna find out the difference between lift capacity on a spec sheet and real world safe working lift capacity because there is a big difference between those two things. Tell you what, if this was my tractor, I'd love it for filming because there are handles all the way around this cab that are the perfect place to clip a camera. All right, so this is not actually on my property. This is the neighbor's property, but he wanted this mode. So it's killing two birds with one stone. Right here is the food plot that you guys saw me till up last week. And then out here is hay field that the previous owner didn't want cut because it was kind of like cover for the deer. And right there is their deer stand. My property line is about 100 feet that way. So we're just gonna mow this hay field that should have been mowed last fall, but I'm only gonna mow half of it because next week I'll have a different tractor here that I wanna mow with. So anyway, enough talking. Let me get in there and get it started. This is one of those things where I assume that any tractor is straightforward and easy to figure out, but I didn't ask the dealer a single question about how to run this machine and I didn't read the manual. So hopefully it's something I can figure out. We've got a large yellow lever here on the left side yellow is almost always pto so let's see what we get all right so we're going to stay in medium range fourth gear start the pto with the throttle down and just pull the lever And she's spinning.
if you ever wondered how two guys fit into a Workmaster 55, here it is. There it is. I want to take just a second to remind you guys where this tractor came from. Jensen Tractor and Equipment in Bartlesville, Oklahoma loaned this tractor to me for one week. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate them taking on the liability of doing that. And hopefully it makes some videos that are valuable to you guys. So if you live anywhere in this area and you're looking for a New Holland tractor, a Yanmar tractor, or some New Holland construction equipment, I say give Jensen Tractor an opportunity to earn your business. Well guys, it was a mistake to bring this up here. The deal is, I've only got this for a week and I want to put it to use. But everywhere down there is muddy and it feels like a huge waste to just leave this tractor setting in the barn. I thought, what can I do that's not muddy? This is the highest piece of ground on any of this property. So I came up on the top of the hill and it's working fine, but I'm, I'm making ruts in my neighbor's field and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to stop mowing, go down and see if I can find any other work to do. I also, I'm a little bit confused on some of the three point controls and I want to see if I can go down, check the manual, figure that out and show you guys how this works once I understand it. So I had trouble getting the three point to operate. And I knew the entire time that there was not a problem with the machine. It's simply ignorance. And ignorance is not an insult to me. Either you know something or you don't. And I've never used a setup like this. And if I bought this tractor, before I bought it, I would have understood it. And I would have had the salesman go through it with me. And I just didn't do it that way when I picked this up. So the problem I had with the three-point was your levers are down here. And you've got two of them. And I knew that one of those levers is the three-point lift setting, and the other lever is the draft control. But no matter which lever I moved, I couldn't get it to, to move. And then finally I figured out that what we have here is like a preset setting. So I can adjust this lever right here to position five, and then I pop that, it moves to position five. I push it back in, it comes up. So it's up and down. And I've seen multiple tractors that had something like that, where you could pick a setting and then there was just an up and a down button instead of controlling it that way. But I didn't know. And because I didn't know, <laughs> I was out there fighting it looking kind of silly. Another thing that's different for me is I'm used to being able to make these corners when I'm brush cutting. Just as I get down there, just turn it and keep going, but well, this has a wider turning radius. So I'm not able to cut that corner close. So I think to mow with this, you're either going to have to make your clover leaves at the end and make a loop to turn around the other way, or you're going to cut it, the corner short and leave those little strips and then maybe come back and hit all those strips later. I've had people tell me that too. So tell me with a bigger tractor like this, how do you do your mowing pattern so that you get everything and and don't waste time turning around or miss those strips on the corners so like i've been saying the weather's made it hard to work what i want to do right now is test out the lift capacity and see how well it handles that weight now it's really interesting trying to read through the manuals on this because this machine can be ordered with two different loaders and the list capacities are dramatically different between those two loaders. They also measure it in a different way than any of the other tractors I've looked at. All the other tractors that I've given you guys specs on list a lift capacity at the pins at full height. This one lists a lift capacity 800 millimeters forward at full height, but they're telling you how much it'll lift out here. Well, all that does is gives you a smaller number for comparison. But this says it will lift 2,500 pounds with this loader. The other loader says 3,200 pounds. Uh, the three-point will lift a lot more. It's 3,500, I think. And you can have a different optional external cylinder that will take that up over 4,000 pounds. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to measure some logs, see how heavy they are, and then pick them up and see how well it can handle it. One thing about this compared to a smaller machine with higher lift capacity, is this machine is going to be much more stable with that weight because of the wider wheelbase, the bigger tires. Even if you're lifting the same amount, 
It's going to feel more powerful. It's going to feel stable carrying it. And not just how it feels, literally, it will be more stable on a hill. The way we're going to test this is I've got four logs here that each weigh a different amount. The one on the end is 1,800 pounds. This one is 600. Then we've got 1,200 and 1,000. So I should be able to find a combination that pretty much maxes out the lift capacity on that. The first two at 1,800 and 600, that'd be 2,400 pounds. And it's giving me that distance out and saying that I can lift 25. So I should be able to pick up these two logs to full height and feel stable doing it. Unlike maybe some tractors that have that high lift height, but don't feel stable. So let's find out. And if it can handle these two, then we can do another combination to get a little bit more weight. So I just said that this should be able to lift this to full height, and I'm getting ready to do that, but stupid is stupid, and I was across the side of a hill on a machine I'm not familiar with. So I would much rather lift capacity up and down the hill so I'm not putting any unnecessary torque on it. I tell you what, there's definitely a difference between lift capacity on a spec sheet and real world lift capacity. Now this thing says 2,500 pound lift capacity, but I picked up 2,500 pounds of logs to full height, which is like 10 or 12 feet. I don't even know. I could look at the sheet and find out, but way higher than why would I need to get 2,500 pounds that high? Now, when we compare it to another machine that only lifts to a maximum height of eight feet or nine feet instead of 11 or 12, you're gonna show a lower lift number because, because as you go up, lift capacity decreases. So it definitely makes a difference. The second set of logs that we picked up would have been 2,800 pounds according to the log weight calculator. And we were able, I was able to take 2,800 pounds of log, which is more than the lift capacity, 2,800 pounds of logs up, I don't know how high I went, seven or eight feet. When would I ever need to put a log higher than eight feet? So in real world scenario where I'm trying to put logs that weigh at a maximum around 3,500 pounds onto my sawmill, this machine, I guarantee it's gonna do that even though I don't have a log that heavy here and it's going to do it and feel more stable, in my opinion, than a smaller tractor with the same log. Now what I'm gonna do, we know how much those logs weigh, we've lifted them with this, I'm gonna save those logs and I'm gonna try to do the exact same thing when I get the other tractors here. So this today was a big learning experience for me. I learned a little bit about using this type of a tractor. I got to do a little bit of brush cutting and kind of get a feel for it and then we, we did some interesting work on the lift capacity. So this is a good first day using this machine. I really appreciate Jensen Tractor in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, letting me borrow this tractor to do these tests with. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. 
I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.